question is current affairs in the region. Some reports today that uh, would be RDF could be back in uh, Congo in the people, and some reports saying that the RDF actually uh, had a war there. Um, and, and we are seeing actually that the uh, FARDC training uh, up. What's your Every time this thing happens or, or comes up, reminds me of the long history we have been with the program. We are now 26 years into the problem, the problem of uh, uh, genocides, the different uh, armed groups that have been born and they, 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 some of them now have grandfathers and grand grandfathers, and they, they have continued to be born every time, everywhere. So, but I have always seen there is one constant. The one constant is the failure to deal with this problem. Uh, even if the discussion for the last 26 years has always been to deal with this problem, uh, what is even worse is that a certain I would say certain people, I don't know how to call them, who should be actually responsible for dealing with this situation end up perpetuating the situation. Uh, and all these survive on uh, myths, rumors, all kinds of things you find anywhere. In, including, surprisingly, the experts. There are experts who have been operating in this region for the last 26 years. They tell the same story, the same, sometimes spread the same rumors, another time spread even the same lies. And that is what we are now used to for the last 26 years without seeing actually and then uh, a solution to this problem. Now, why am I saying this? I have heard the same stories you, you, you are talking about, you have heard. Let me start with the south, the southern part of uh, Eastern Congo. That is the uh, Vira, Minembwe, where the Banyamurenge live, and you know, that whole region south of Bukavu. You know, I am surprised that you have some of these experts who don't see what is there that is actually supposed to be seen by anyone who is there. But instead, they see what is not there. What I mean is, how could somebody be talking about Rwandans or RDF, the Rwanda Defense Forces, in that part of the region, because they are not there? And this same person or these people don't see the very things happening there uh, through our intelligence collection which we share, by the way, with uh, those who are even supposed to be dealing with the situation, because we give it to them when you have collected it, so that they can actually do what they are supposed to do. Our intelligence collection tells us we have forces from Burundi, government forces operating in that region. We have an a number of rebel groups, you can't 
counted them easily. In that situation, they involve Burundi, they involve uh, people from here, Th those uh, old groups uh, connected with the FDRR that kept breaking up into different pieces. And we have those groups that have gone as far south to in those areas of Fizi and uh, have been operating in that region, uh, uh, working together with the different Mai Mai groups and uh, then the other groups from Burundi on both sides fighting each other. It's, it's a cocktail, it's, it's, it's a mess. So I don't know whether people are confusing genuinely or deliberately. The, the, the Rwandans that are said to be there and have been there for a long time are these offsprings of FDRR. It's not RDF. These are two different things. There is not a single soldier of RDF that has gone to that territory. Not a single one. I, I, I say to his authority. But some NGOs, some uh, journalists are able to see battalions and all kinds of things. But the government of uh, DRC knows the fact, knows that, knows that RDF, not a single soldier of RDF is there. They know those. I don't know what Monosco says. I don't know what uh, whoever wants to say the same. So please take it from me. There is not a single soldier in uh, that part of the world. Now, you can come to the north. I'll tell you again something that is intriguing, linking to the history of this problem. I mentioned to you that fortunately, we have a government in DRC that has come to agree to work with the region, the countries in the region, their neighbors, to try and resolve this problem that has been there for decades. And uh, the government of DRC, the current government, has been very helpful. Uh, in working with the countries in the region. According to some people, of course, that's not a good thing. The same people who create those stories like you have in the South. It's not a good thing that uh, the government of uh, DRC would be working with countries, neighboring countries, to deal with this matter because for some reason, it is a problem they want to preserve uh, so that uh, maybe it stays for another 25 years. I don't know. And that's why they are putting pressure on them by creating these lies and saying, look, look, you know, there's another group coming. So first, they don't talk about uh, <laughs> other countries. They talk about Rwanda all the time. That's okay, I have no problem with that. Because anyway, we are the ones with the bigger problem to deal with. And I told you that we give information to our partners in the region, including the UN and others, the information we get about these activities. We have been giving information as well to the government of DRC, and in fact, they started acting on some of the information we gave them because they were also able to verify and see what was uh, growing in the North Kivu and they started operating against these groups of FDRR and they have all kinds of names. I, I don't want to go into that. When they started operations and based on this information and collaboration you had with them, now the whole thing turns against them again. It's like actually acting against these groups is, is a crime in itself. And then a dynamic is set up internally 
to start questioning, harassing the government. They say, ah, you know, why do you see this Rwanda which is coming in and doing this? They're not complaining about the presence of F. Bererar. They're not complaining about the havoc they cause to the people of the DRC. No, they are, co they are creating a myth and uh, some uh, kind of monster uh, of RDF having crossed and gone into the DRC to carry out operation. Nothing talked about even what they would be operating against if they crossed. Now, recently, you saw the FDR laid an ambush on uh, this road in areas of Ruchuro. They killed these guards uh, who work in Virunga, in Virunga, massive in the, on the DRC side. There was only one mention once and about, you know, some FDRs, some rebels from Rwanda having killed people, and that was it. That's not a big deal. It's not an issue. Uh, so they just make a mention it in the passing. It's, it's like these people have been made to feel entitled, actually, to to do whatever they want to do in the DRC, and if anybody raises anything about them. But the UN forces are there. In fact, they were brought there to deal with that problem. I wish they had dealt with the problem or are dealing with the problem. They are not. So everything comes to be summarized as Rwanda getting involved in the RSC. That is the answer for every problem that is raised about it. So, uh, my dear friend, uh, one, the RSC has been very helpful uh, because it's their territory and uh, the people in the RSC are the ones actually suffering on the hands of uh, uh, these rebel groups maybe except those who work with them, some benefit from working with them. As you saw, it's not even the best just in the RSC, it's external. Somebody complains about Rwanda uh, being in the RSC, uh, operating against the FDRR and they prefer to call them refugees rather than FDRR. And they are doing that from abroad. And some of these people who are doing that are Rwandese who actually finance or support these groups operating in the DRC, or their supporters also who are not Rwandese necessarily, who are from Europe or America or wherever. So the whole thing keeps being a cocktail. And that explains why this problem has been there for the last. 26 years.